Welcome to Effector from the Electronic Frontier Foundation. This is the audio edition of EFF's email newsletter geared towards keeping you on the bleeding edge of your digital rights. This is Effector Volume 36, Issue 11, titled Geofence Warrants Headed to SCOTUS. This issue was published in August 2024, and I'm your host, membership advocate Christian Romero. Let's start with our top feature. Federal Appeals Court Finds Geofence Warrants Are Categorically Unconstitutional Closely following arguments EFF has made in a number of cases, the court found that geofence warrants constitute the sort of general exploratory rummaging that the drafters of the Fourth Amendment intended to outlaw. This conflicts with another circuit's appellate decision, which means it could be headed for the U.S. Supreme Court. And now, let's roll through some EFF updates. First up, how to fix the internet podcast. AI in Kittopia. Kit Walsh, EFF's Director of Artificial Intelligence and Access to Knowledge Legal Projects, and EFF Senior Staff Technologist Jacob Hoffman Andrews discuss how AI shouldn't be a tool to cash in or to classify people for favor or disfavor, but instead to engage with technology and information in ways that advance us all. Next up, EFF presses Federal Circuit to make patent case filings public. EFF has filed our opening brief in the appeal of a federal trial court ruling that lets patent litigants treat courts like their own private tribunals, effectively shutting out the public, and we've got a lot of allies supporting us. Next up, EFF and 12 organizations tell Bumble, don't sell user data without opt-in consent. Bumble markets itself as a safe dating app, but it may be selling your deeply personal data unless you opt out, risking your privacy for their profit. Next, digital apartheid in Gaza. Big tech must reveal their roles in tech used in human rights abuses. Since the start of the Israeli military response to Hamas's deadly October 7th attack, U.S.-based companies like Google and Amazon have been under pressure to reveal more about the relationships they provide and the nature of the relationships with the Israeli forces engaging in military response. For our last update, the UN General Assembly and the Fight Against the Cybercrime Treaty. The UN General Assembly could consider this awful treaty as soon as next month. If it passes, member states will be invited to sign and ratify the treaty. That's where civil society and human rights defenders can unite to kill it. And now, let's go through some announcements. EFF Livestream Series, Reproductive Justice in the Digital Age. This summer marks the two-year anniversary of the Dobbs decision overturning Roe v. Wade. Join EFF on Wednesday, October 28th for a live stream discussion about restrictions to reproductive health care and the choices people seeking an abortion must face in the digital age where everything is connected and surveillance is rampant. Learn what's happening across the United States and how you can get involved. Next up, reintroducing the EFA. We're thrilled to share that the Electronic Frontier Alliance has a fresh new look and a wealth of new resources for community organizers. Next up, EFF at TechCrunch Disrupt. EFF is excited to be at TechCrunch Disrupt from October 28th through 30th in San Francisco for the first time. Digital Freedom supporters can even get a 35% discount off any ticket type by using code EFF35 when registering online. We'll see you there. And for our last announcement, the EFF Awards are coming up soon. Register now for the EFF Awards Ceremony on Thursday, September 12th, 2024 at the Golden Gate Club in San Francisco's Presidio. Carolina Botero, Connecting Humanity, and 404 Media will receive the 2024 EFF Awards for their vital work ensuring that technology supports freedom, justice, and innovation for all people. Fansplaining co-host and the Rec Center co-curator Elizabeth Minkle will deliver the keynote address. The ceremony will also be live-streamed and recorded. Now, let's go through a few job openings. Human Resources Manager EFF seeks a Human Resources Manager to oversee all day-to-day HR operations and supervise a team of two staff members. The HR Manager, working on-site in San Francisco, will help build the systems and procedures needed to support effective delivery of HR services across the organization and will also partner with the finance and information technology staff to enhance and better integrate HR, finance, and IT functions. Next up, legal interns. We're seeking applications for the spring 2025 intern class. EFF's legal internships provide law students with a unique opportunity to develop valuable skills and real-world experience, 
while also working with a nationally recognized public interest law firm. Legal interns learn from and assist EFF staff attorneys in all aspects of litigation, including legal research, factual investigation, and drafting a memoranda of briefs while also helping with policy research, client counseling, and the development of public education materials. And finally, it's time to go through some mini-links. First up from Scientific American, the UN Cybercrime Treaty could threaten human rights. The UN Cybercrime Convention is a blank check for surveillance abuses, said EFF's Katito Rodriguez. It can and will be wielded as a tool for systemic rights violations. Next, from the Washington Post, a booming industry of AI age scanners aimed at children's faces. All these extremely sensitive pieces of information linked to people's faces, said EFF's Jason Kelly. For a hacker, that's the best treasure trove I can imagine. Next, from Mother Jones, can Elon Musk really sue people for not wanting to be seen with him? This suit sits at the uncomfortable junction of antitrust law and free speech, said EFF's Mitch Stoltz. Next, from Wired, your gym locker may be hackable. If we do not know about security vulnerabilities, we cannot fix them, and we cannot make better systems in the future, said Hannah Zhao, part of EFF's team that helped ensure the DEF CON talk could go ahead after a cease and desist letter was received. And last up, from Byline Times, Care Starmer wants police to expand the use of facial recognition technology across the UK. He should ban it altogether. Using the United Kingdom's racist riots as an excuse to expand law enforcement's use of face recognition technology is a rash mistake that will only exacerbate harm against immigrant communities already under threat, wrote EFF's Page colleagues. And that's a wrap. Thanks for listening. If you like what you're hearing or would like to learn more, subscribe at EFF.org slash Effector. Did you know EFF is a member-supported nonprofit organization? You can help us protect digital freedoms online for everyone by donating at EFF.org slash Effect. Thanks for your support, and I hope you'll join us for the next issue of Effector.